Another year has begun and there are a lot of important milestones ahead for the SpaceX team working on the massive Mars-bound Starship rocket. They're winding up to run to the finish line. But what about you? Are you ready because SpaceX's Starship's ambitious testing campaign will be officially back this week? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Boca SpaceX activity has been posted for this week. Notably, SpaceX got up to 15 hours, which is almost certainly one major step closer to Starship's orbital flight. Specifically, Cameron County Judge Eddie Trevino Jr. has ordered the temporary closure of access to Boca Chica Beach as well as State Highway 4 from FM 1419 to the entrance of Boca Chica Beach due to anticipated test launch activities for SpaceX. I have amended the ordered closure of Boca Chica Beach and Highway 4 for the purpose of protecting public health and safety during SpaceX non-flight testing activity on January 9, 2023 in the time period between 2 a.m. Central to 5 p.m. Central in place of 8 a.m. Central to 8 p.m., Trevino stated. The question is what the SpaceX team will do during this long period of time. Well, in the best case, we can see a fully stacked Starship. SpaceX returned Booster 7 to the production site to repair damage or install missing hardware, which took about a month. As you can see, Stage 0 has recently been tested to prepare for orbital flight. They simulated a fully fueled 5,000 ton Starship for the first time on the OLM. Besides, there's a lot of Raptors in the tent. Look at this picture. The row of Raptor V2s with the new Electric Thrust Vector Control TVC. Two rows actually and two more off to the left if you look closely. Everything seems to be ready. So this is when B7 needs to return to its hot seat to do its mission with Ship 24. Since they began qualification testing in April and May of 2022, Booster 7 and Ship 24 have each completed several important tests. Ship 24 ignited all six of its Raptors, but the seemingly successful September 8th test was followed by more than a month of apparent repairs. On November 14th, Booster 7 completed a record-breaking 14-engine static fire, doubling its previous record of seven engines and likely becoming one of the most powerful rockets in history. Musk simply stated that the test went well. On November 29th, after an aborted test on the 28th, SpaceX followed Booster 7's record-breaking 14-engine static fire with a longer 13-second test of 11 Raptors. Before engine ignition, SpaceX loaded Booster 7 with about 2,800 tons or about 6.2 million pounds of liquid oxygen propellant in less than 90 minutes, making it a partial wet dress rehearsal. The methane tank was barely filled as well. Musk called it a little more progress toward Mars. And SpaceX shared a photo of the static fire on Twitter, but the results of the test meant to test autogenous pressurization was mostly kept opaque. Then Booster 7 was removed from Starbase's lone orbital launch mount on December 2nd and rolled back to the factory's high bay assembly facility December 3rd. This time, after fully stacking, Booster 7 and Ship 24 may attempt Starship's first full-stack wet dress rehearsal WDR once all is in order. The prototypes will be simultaneously loaded with around 5,000 tons or about 11 million pounds of liquid oxygen and methane propellant and then run through a launch countdown, diverging just before ignition and liftoff. A WDR is meant to be more or less identical to a launch attempt. If the wet dress rehearsal goes to plan, SpaceX will then attempt to simultaneously ignite all 33 of the Raptor engines installed on Super Heavy B7, almost certainly making it the most powerful liquid rocket ever tested. Even if all 33 engines never reach more than 60% of their maximum thrust of 230 tons or 510,000 foot-pounds, they'll likely break the Soviet N1 rocket's record of 4,500 tons of thrust or about 10 million foot-pounds and that's at sea level. It'll also be one of the most rocket engines ever simultaneously ignited on one vehicle. SpaceX will be pushing the envelope by several measures and success is far from guaranteed. It's unclear if SpaceX will immediately attempt a full wet dress rehearsal or a 33 engine static fire. Based on the history of Ship 24 and Booster 7 testing, it would be a departure from the norm if the company doesn't slowly build up to both major milestones with smaller tests in the interim. At a minimum, assuming WDR testing is completed without major issues, SpaceX will likely attempt at least one or more interim static fires with fewer than 33 engines before attempting the first full test. 
If both milestones, a full WDR and 33-engine static fire, are completed without significant issue, there's a chance that SpaceX could move directly into preparation for Starship's first orbital launch attempt without unstacking the rocket. In the likelier scenario that some issues arise and some repairs are required, the path will be more circuitous. Notably, while trying to get Starship into orbit, SpaceX raised $750 million at $137 billion valuation. In November, Reuters reported SpaceX was planning to allow insiders to offer their shares for sale in the secondary market at valuation of up to $150 billion. Last month, Bloomberg first reported that SpaceX was allowing insiders to sell at $77 per share, which would have put the company's valuation near $140 billion. The company raised more than $2 billion in 2022, including a $250 million round in July, and was valued at $127 billion during an equity round in May. According to an email sent to prospective SpaceX investors, Andresen Horowitz, also known as A16Z, will likely lead the new funding round. Early SpaceX investors including Founders Fund, Sequoia, Gigafund, and many others. A16Z also participated in Elon Musk's leverage buyout of Twitter, a $44 billion deal that closed in late October 2022. Last year, SpaceX achieved several new milestones but faced delays to its Starship program, which is part of NASA's effort to bring astronauts back to the moon. On the upside, the company's satellite internet service, Starlink, exceeded 1 million subscribers and provided a lifeline to users in the Ukraine who suffered infrastructure disruptions after the Russian invasion. SpaceX also managed to surpass 60 reusable rocket launches in a single year via the Falcon program. The company is currently continuing development of its Starship and Super Heavy launch vehicle at the company's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. As Musk has repeatedly sounded off about geopolitical issues on Twitter, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson recently asked SpaceX President and COO Gwen Shotwell whether his distraction as the new owner and CEO of Twitter might affect SpaceX's work with the space agency. Nelson said that Shotwell reassured him it would not. NASA is now also considering whether SpaceX can help rescue residents on the International Space Station, including an astronaut and two cosmonauts with Russia's Roscosmos. Russia's Soyuz capsule sprung a coolant leak in December, and an investigation is underway to determine if the spacecraft can safely return the crew home or if emergency measures will be taken instead. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.